by thanking the organisers of this meeting for inviting me to speak. I'm absolutely delighted to be here. And also all of you for coming along, and particularly all of you who were in the hall yesterday when we made a speech in favour of bringing the railways back into public ownership. Because the reception that we got in that hall can leave the leadership of the Labour Party in no doubt, if they ever had any doubt, that that is what we need to do with our railways. And the sooner, the sooner we make that pledge, the nearer we will get to having a Labour government. One of the reasons I'm going to have to be relatively brief is that I'm having an argument at the moment with the Conference Arrangements Committee. They haven't made their minds up yet. They haven't made their minds up yet whether or not to rule out a motion. Even though, even though they've had the motion now for a couple of weeks, we're still having a debate and they offered me today, they said, we'll trade your motion for a speech. I said, I already made the speech yesterday. <laughs> And you know, our motion ain't particularly radical. We are not asking the Labour Party to spend a penny to bring the railways back into public ownership. Because frankly, we've been fleeced enough. Why would you give those bandits a single penny in compensation? All we are asking, all we are asking is that as franchises come to an end, and most of them will come to an end during, during what hopefully will be a Labour government in 2015. Now <coughs> all they have to do is thank them very much and have the keys back. That's all we're asking. That would not cost, would not cost a dime. And that's why we think that we have to push that policy. But I didn't come to speak to you about the railway today. I actually came to speak to you about the link with the Labour Party. My union, together with many, of the other unions, and I see a comrade from the Vegas Union, which was one of the first unions that signed up to this campaign. We have said, we have said that keeping the link is vital because let's be brutally honest: a Labour Party without a link to organised labour will be a political party, but not one that, with an ounce of honesty, could be described as being a Labour Party. Yeah. You know what? He <laughs> What has kept the Labour Party afloat has been its link to organised workers. Even, even when nobody wanted to know about the Labour Party, the trade unions stood shoulder to shoulder, the affiliated trade unions stood shoulder to shoulder after the betrayal of the SDP. We should shoulder to shoulder to ensure that we had a Labour Party left behind. And the idea, the idea that you can have a party without the support of organised labour. It's not one that I am prepared to contemplate. Not in my watch as a trade union leader. <laughs> we will do whatever it takes to make sure that that link remains. You know, I would love to see, I would love to see a Labour Party with a million members, but not at the expense of the collective voice of working people. <laughs> that you could do otherwise. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you want to attract members, the one thing they should do is start listening to us. Because for years, for years, we've been treated as the elderly relative who turns up and uh, don't want over the Christmas meal. They don't want to spend any time for them. And you know, the policies that we've put forward, collectively, all the trade unions have put forward, have been proved right. We were against privatization, and PFIs. Look at the mountain bill, the mountain bill that the face, the state is going to have to face now for those mistakes. We want them, we want them. They should have never gone down the road, but they ignored us. We told them that bringing the railways back into public ownership was a vote winner. Yet again, they ignored us. And when they started, when they started to really move down the neoliberal path, we said this would lead to economic disaster. Well, 2008 proved our point. Look, comrades, I want to finish on this. 
I want to thank everybody for your support in keeping the link. I think we've got the fight of our lives in front of us. I don't know why Ed Miliband made that announcement. There's no votes in it, absolutely no. You know, what people want to know is what Labour was going to do with the bedroom tax. Thankfully, they said they're going to abolish it. They want to know what we're going to do with our railways. They want to know what they're going to do to bring all those public services that have been privatised to bring them back into the public sector. And they want to know how are we going to guarantee full employment. Talking about the Union League is naval blazing when working people in this country are having the worst times of their lives. Thank you very much. Thanks, Manuel.